I have in front of me a ton of different knives from New West Knifeworks, and I want to not so scientifically categorize them, I want to compare them, and if you're on the fence or curious about different knives and features and which one might be right for you, this is the video to watch. Just to get it out of the way so I'm not repeating myself, there are some similarities across all of these knives, so let's talk about those first. You probably already know about the high quality American manufacturing, from the design choices to the sourcing of the materials to the hand finishings that go into these, like the knife makers that touch these as they come off of the manufacturing line, that do the little nitty gritty, you know, buffing choices that make it so that the handle and the tang, you can't even tell the difference between the metal and the G10. That is true across all the blades that I'm going to talk about today. The handles, this is G Fusion. This is a G10 material. The TLDR on the G10 is this is going to last you your entire life. This is nearly indestructible. I could leave this handle on the stove behind me next to a burner that's going, and I would actually be more worried about the heat treatment of the steel that's happening with the temperature change back there, rather than the durability of the G Fusion handle. Just because I cover one colorway on here does not mean that's the only colorway that exists. There are a bunch of different choices from these really unique color palettes all the way to just black if you want a more minimalist aesthetic. If you're a fan of more natural looking materials, I highly recommend checking out the super sturdy and dense desert ironwood that adds a really unique grain across all of the different handles and it's available on almost every single blade that New West Knifeworks offers. That hand finishing on the handle is reflected also into the blade where you're going to see a really fine edge on every single one of these, the spine beveling details so that if it's a knife that you happen to use a pinch grip with, it's going to be incredibly comfortable because you're not going to have any harsh edges up on the spine. Speaking of steel, there's a very intentional choice across every single one of these knives, with the exception of the steak knife, which I'll get to when I talk about this one, to use CPM S35 VN steel. Metallurgy and alloy nerdiness aside, what you can expect with S35 VN is that 58 to 60 Rockwell hardness, as well as that incredible combination of toughness, edge retention, and stain resistance. Now let's get into the designs, which are all heavily influenced by Corey Milligan, who is a chef-turned knife maker and the person who kind of heads up all of the nerdiness that goes into each one of these designs. In order, the categories I'm going to break down today are daily drivers, sidekicks, what I call large and in charge, as well as specialty knives. Let's start with daily drivers. These are incredible if you cook a lot and if you just need trusted companions inside of the kitchen. I'll start with the 8-inch chef knife because this is a common knife that you'll see in people's knife blocks, in drawers in their house, and even professional chefs, they gravitate towards this knife because it is so versatile. The first thing that most folks notice, myself included, when you pick up the 8-inch chef knife is the fact that it is so lightweight and nimble. It is pretty thick coming off of the spine where you hold that pinch grip, but then it does this incredibly drastic tapering all the way in towards the tip and it doesn't have any sort of flex or flimsiness to it. The other thing that you'll notice and is unique compared to some other chunkier western style chef knives is the shortness of this knife. It doesn't sacrifice on knuckle clearance. My hands aren't the biggest in the world but I still don't struggle with actually being able to rock chop and having my knuckles hit the board. But this can tackle dicing onions throughout your week, making a stir fry, even butchery tasks. I think this is pretty well suited for that. I know I've personally felt certain chef knives that try to go for this more streamlined blade profile and they also make the handle more streamlined this still feels really secure in your hand and so you have a lot of control when you're using this knife. If you're coming from something a little bit chunkier and want a little bit more knuckle clearance, I would suggest the Western Chef Knife. This blade profile to me kind of combines the best of both worlds of like maybe a cleaver with that really tall blade profile and then it has that almost bowie knife taper down towards the tip. So you can do that delicate knife work but if you have a bunch of chopping to do this is going to be one of your best friends. What I personally love about the Western Chef is if you're used to using more cleaver techniques with like sectioning off the blade into different areas to work for different tasks like slits with the tip or you know that more chopping slicing motion with the more towards the heel this is amazing for that and most cleavers actually have kind of like a really short you know stout handle but this actually has that full handle that you're going to expect from more of a chef knife and so you can use this with again a little bit more control also if your workflow and the way that you prep includes a lot of like chopping and scooping into pots into bowls this is going to be amazing for you because this blade profile just suits that workflow. If you like a lot of those features but this feels a little bit too big for you, let me introduce you to the Teton Edge Santoku. There is a reason this has become one of the most popular and best-selling blade profile just in the world. Don't even think about New West Knifeworks. This blade profile fits most hands. It is actually in line with a lot of ingredients that most people cook with, especially at home. And there's a lot of details in this one from New West Knifeworks that I want to bring to your attention. The first and probably the most noticeable is the Teton Edge etching that's in the side of this blade. This is a proprietary process. Most most people do the dimple grinding, which causes heat and friction and messes with 
the heat treatment of the steel. The process at New West Knifeworks is entirely cold, which means that your steel is going to be protected. There's nothing that's been messed with there. And it is inspired by nature. It's inspired by the beautiful mountain ranges where the knives are actually designed. What this means functionally when you're using this knife is you have this kind of like stick deterrent strip along the side of the knife. So as you're cutting, you know, thin vegetables or things that would traditionally stick up and ride along up the side of the blade, as you're chopping, it gives that little air gap. And so those ingredients can just fall off and get out of your way. Another thing that I've personally found with Santoku knives is because they're typically catered towards the person who's cooking at home a lot, as opposed to the professional, they skimp on the materials. And so you're not having a steel that's going to hold up very long and all of the other handle details or like even the durability of the handle sometimes comes at a loss. With this Santoku, you're getting a blade profile that you probably already love combined with all of the nerdy knife features that New West Knifeworks pours into this. And so things like dicing bell peppers, making a quick salad, dicing up chicken breasts, or even root vegetables, this Santoku excels. Plus, if you've got smaller hands, or again, if you are that person who likes to chop and scoop as you're prepping, this is amazing for that. I come from a background of professional kitchens, but even cooking at home a lot, like I need to cut up a bunch of fruit for my son. The Santoku is a frequently reached for blade now in my kitchen. Speaking of more of those daily tasks that don't require an immensely long blade, that's where the petty knife comes in. I put the petty knife in the category of daily driver because once you have one and start using it, you start to notice that you're using it a lot more than you thought you would. If it's meal prep day and you have a bunch of groceries or you just went to the farmer's market and you need to process a bunch of stuff, yeah, maybe another knife might be better suited for that. But things like a quick wake night dinner where you just need to use something that's in the fridge or if you're making a quick omelet for yourself in the morning, the petty knife is all that you need. This design, in my opinion, takes the best advantage of that tapering from spine all the way into the tip. And you really feel that when you use this across more delicate tasks, especially things like butchering. Think tasks like, you know, a quick bunch of basil that you're just gonna run your knife through in chiffonade, or if you need to slice up a lemon to stuff inside of a fish that you're gonna roast. Getting even more practical, if it's just the middle of the day, you need a snack, you're gonna slice up an apple for yourself, the petty knife is perfect. It does have that utility knife blade profile. It's not as tall as other utility knives. It has more of that mini slicer style blade profile, which if you're using it for delicate tasks, slicing a shallot, for example, this is incredible. If knuckle clearance is more your thing, that is a perfect segue into the sidekicks category. And so I'll introduce you to the chopper. If the petty was a mini slicer, the chopper is almost like a mini Santoku. It has that knuckle clearance and it feels, again, super sturdy in the hand. And you can get that just kind of like down straight into the board feeling when you're using this. The chopper is incredible for projects like salsas or again, stir fries. If you're doing garlic, ginger, green onions, those types of projects, incredible because you can just blast through those. You can do rock chopping motions, plenty of knuckle clearance. And again, because that handle feels really secure and the blade isn't that long, it feels like you're wielding something that you can just power through tasks with. I know I talked about rock chopping with the chopper, but even if you're doing a task where it's going to be that up and down slicing motion, think mushrooms or cutting up a head of lettuce. This is also incredible because of how lightweight it is. The chopper is a great way to introduce the sidekick category because the chopper is probably not going to be the only knife that you have, but in lieu of busting out a bigger knife or a bigger cutting board, even if you just have a small task that you need to do, that's why the sidekicks come into play because those are going to actually support you in getting all the tasks you need done without taking up a bunch of space. All of the sidekicks I'm going to cover, the chopper included, is also really good if you have kind of like an auxiliary station set up. Think if you have kind of like the grill outside and then your main kitchen inside. Maybe if you have a different room in the house that has like a bar set up, for example, and you need to be able to cut cocktail garnish. Chopper's great for that. If you have a really small setup or you're really tight on space, or maybe you just have really small hands and you want something that is actually gonna still get the job done, that's where the mini chopper comes into play. Again, even smaller for even more delicate tasks. This is like you have to put a charcuterie board together and you need to just kind of like cut cheese out of the packaging and cut it into wedges. Or you have, let's say, like a pretty manageable piece of salami and you just need to slice that or an apple or pickles. Again, incredible for bar garnish, you know, just like slicing mint off of like a big sprig or even cubing up pieces of cheese. Again, this is project dependent and take this with a grain of salt, but I actually like the thinness of the mini chopper, especially with the swooping kind of belly of the blade profile. So if I have actually really delicate work, I actually like to use the mini chopper for things like that. Speaking of delicate work, and if you need to choke up on the blade, the paring knife is actually going to be the next knife in the sidekick category. This also has that kind of swooped blade profile. It's really unique amongst paring knives. You don't see this very often in the paring knife category. This is going to be incredibly ergonomic for things like deveining shrimp or 
taking the stems off of strawberries. There's a reason that such a common pairing in professional kitchens is like chef knife and paring knife, because you can use the chef knife for the bigger tasks, and the more delicate in your hand tasks is perfect for the pairing. Speaking of another great pairing is anything from the daily driver category mixed with something like the deli knife. This has my preference of serrations on serrated knives, which is the more scalloped edge on these, which is done specifically from New West Knife Works. They have a machine that does these fully custom. You actually have an asymmetric beveling on the serrations too. And so these are gonna last for a really long time and feel really sharp when you use this. Anything with like a skin or a crust, think like heirloom tomatoes or baguettes or a bagel, just everything is scared of the deli in that category and even some of the knives in the daily driver category with their sharp finished edge it's just not going to be able to cut through that as well as something with a serration is going to also because these serrations are going to hold up better over time just based on the structuring of the edge itself it's going to mean that even if you do decide to kind of like nudge this into the daily driver category it's going to make sure that you're not tearing those ingredients as you're slicing them it's going to still be delicate and give you a good slice between daily driver and sidekick that's going to cover i'm going to say 80 percent of the tasks that you're gonna to need to tackle in the kitchen. And speaking of a multitasking powerhouse, let me introduce you to the Chris Kidder Special. If you're like myself and come from a professional kitchen background, or even if you're super comfortable with knives around your house, this is a 12 inch long chef knife that brings in some of the inspiration for more slicing style knives. And for those of us that love and use the Chris Kidder Special, we can use this for almost everything inside of the kitchen. We have the knuckle clearance to be able to do rock chopping, the longer slicing tasks, or even the big hefty kind of like breaking down a pineapple apple or cutting into a cabbage. Even going into more delicate tip work with this one, this covers the entire board. It covers a lot of your bases if you're really comfortable again with knives. Because this is a new West Knifeworks design, this is incredibly lightweight for a blade profile this large. And so you don't get fatigued wielding this around for, I can do a whole dinner with a Chris Kidder. If this feels a little bit too long or you don't want something that is so short, I would actually steer you towards the nine inch chef knife. It is also taller than the eight inch chef knife for all intents and purposes if you prefer larger knives or if you have bigger hands the eight inch chef knife might not be right for you going for the nine inch is probably going to be your best bet this actually has much more similarities to like a japanese gyoto if you're used to that blade profile and feel in the hand if the nine inch was going a little bit taller from the chris kidder if we go a little bit shorter that's actually going to lead us into the carving knife and this has a bunch of cool features that i think are really underrated i wish that the carving knife got a little bit more love because i love this knife i lean towards slicers personally myself when i'm prepping and so i'm no stranger to this blade profile i love the way that this kind of swoops really delicately into the tip and then it has that spine detailing for more serving tasks and so if you're the type of person who cooks a lot of proteins steaks carving chicken turkey this has an elevated section coming up out of the spine that is beveled and so as you're serving whether it's with a fork or a spoon you can actually use this up along the board or the platter to kind of take this and transport things onto something like the serving vessel that's actually going to go to the table what i do like is the length of this this is actually going to be the last one that we're going to cover in our large and in charge category because because this is starting to actually nudge us more into specialty territory, which I'm going to actually start off with the fillet. Inspired by a ton of those pillars of design details that go into outdoorsman knives, fused with those materials that New West Knifeworks champions, that's where you get the fillet knife. This goes incredibly thin up until that really exaggerated tip and that swoops up, making sure that as you're going into the belly of the fish or riding along the bones of whatever it is that you're butchering, you have all of that control and your yield is going to be as high as possible. It has that non-slip detail right down here where your finger is going to naturally rest and so you have no worry about even though it's going to be wet and maybe a little bit slimy as you're butchering your hand is going to be safe this is not the most flexible fillet knife in the world but you have just the right amount of give that you want to have to be able to again flex around those bones and then towards the heel you actually have that stiffness so if you're skinning fillets or want that stiffness where it's going to stay flat you have that feature already built into the fillet next in the specialty category i want to talk about the super bread again this has one of the best serration patterns I've ever seen in a bread knife. It has these more smooth, more controlled serrations that have that more scalloped look to them. It has that asymmetric beveling, and so it's going to feel really sharp when you get it. And New West Knifeworks includes that free sharpening service, and so you may, you're making sure that it's getting sent back to the person who created the serrations. And so when this is tuned up, it's going to come back to you feeling just like new. If you're a fan of the way that any of the chef knives feel in the hand, you're going to love the super bread because it follows that same blade profile with like that more tapered tip that does does actually have not that serrated edge 
stage. And so if you want to have a little bit of tip work, let's say you're making a caprese salad and you're slicing a bunch of tomatoes with this, but you need a tip that is actually going to be able to take the stem out of the tomato, they've thought of that and that's included in the super bread. Again, I talked about it with the deli as I was talking about the serration piece here, but making sure that when you're using a serrated knife, it's not having these jagged teeth that's tearing through the food. This is actually going to make sure that your cuts are clean. Things like dicing bread for croutons or making French toast, or even if you're a big bread pudding type person, I know it's in the name in the super bread, but this is going to be a much more high quality version of the bread knife that you probably already have in your kitchen. And lastly, the only departure from the S35VN steel, the steak knife has a 440C steel, and that's because of the stain resistant and toughness properties. And that's because this is going to be up against your porcelain and tender meat at your table. This is not going to have the same use case as all of the other knives in this suite. What I love about the steak knife is the sectioned blade where you have the serrations towards the tip and then the straight edge towards the bottom. And so you're not, again, having that jagged cutting through the protein that you work so hard to prepare. You also have that ergonomic design that keeps in mind wanting to keep your guest's hands away from the sharp edges and actually having that really comfortable wide section of the spine for them to rest their finger on as you're holding it in that, you know, more traditional sitting at the table enjoying a steak type of grip. It might seem like overkill to put the G Fusion handle on these steak knives, but having this in place makes sure that this is going to last a lifetime, which is one of the key reasons why award-winning steakhouse and restaurants that have James Beard Awards use these steak knives. Knives and the choices that you make and which knife you're going to bring into your kitchen and put in your hand and prepare the foods that are going to get served to either yourself or your loved ones is incredibly personal. And so I hope this breakdown, the comparison, the pros and cons of each of these knives has been helpful for you and helps you make a decision. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to New West Knifeworks, and I'll see you in the next one.